Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss the solutions for Code Forces round 815, which was written for division 2. So uh, in this particular question, the first question, it says that you have been given two fractions in the form of A by B and C by D. So uh, overall, it will be given four integers and you have to find uh, the number of steps to make both of them or both of the fractions equal in value. So the number of steps uh, would be like one step is counted as either you can multiply A with some number or you can multiply B with some number or you can multiply C with some number or multiply D with some number. So for example, if you have been given two numbers or oh, four numbers A, B, A, B, C and D, then the fractions would be A by B and C by D. You have to make both of these fractions equal in value by uh, by the minimum number of steps. So in each step, you can either multiply C with some number. So this would be counted as one, as one step. You can multiply D with some number. So it would be counted as another step. So uh, this is the process that you have to uh, go through and you have to find the minimum number of steps. So the first thing, whenever I see fractions involved in the equations, the first step uh, which I do is I find, uh, I convert those fractions into simple fractions. Simple fractions, what I mean by simple fractions, for example, if I have been given 2 by 4, I will convert it into 1 by 2. So how can I do it? I can find the GCD of 2 and 4. And if I find their GCD, it would be 2. And I can divide the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2. So I will get this final fraction. So first of all, the very first step that I will do is I will convert the given fraction, both of these fractions into final fractions, uh, simple fractions. So if I have been given A by B and C by D, they should be equal, right? So I can write it as A multiplied by D should be equal to B multiplied by C, right? So actually, if you observe, uh, we at, at maximum, we need two number of steps to uh, make our solution work. So let us discuss those three cases. When the number of steps required are zero, when the number of steps required are one, and the number of steps required are two. So these would be three different cases. When you will require zero number of steps, this will be the case when this these two values are already equal. When a into d is equal to b into c, right? So uh, the next the next scenario when you will require one one number of steps, this will be the case. For example, this value is x and this value is y. For now, let us assume that x is greater than y, and x is a multiple of y is a multiple of y right so what do we mean by x is a multiple of y it means that if i multiply this particular integer by some a number x or oh, let me take another value by some number z then it will become equal to x right so i can either multiply this number z to either b or to either c it doesn't matter uh, the overall result would be now equal to x so when x is greater than y and x is a multiple of y, the number of steps required would be 1. But what if x is not a multiple of y? Then you will have to, for example, x and y are two different numbers and x is not a multiple of y. In this case, to make them equal, what you need to do is make them both equal to the LCM of x and y. Right? This would be a, a very like this would be the obvious answer. To make them both equal, you have to make them equal to LCM of x and y. So you will have to multiply this side by some number a and you have to multiply this side by some number b. Right. Then you can make it equal to LCM of x and y and the number of steps required in this case would be equal to 2. So uh, this is exactly how we will code it. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I just take input of 4 integers a, b, and c, a, b, c and d. I take GCD of a and b, I take GCD of c and d and I divide a by GCD of, uh, by the first GCD, B by the first GCD and so on. I obtain the simple fractions. Now I calculate two values X and Y. I, I calculate X as A into B and Y as B into C. Now I, if I check if X is smaller than Y, I just swap both of them. I, I did this to make uh, to ensure that my X is always greater than Y, right? So now if X is equal to Y, then we can uh, output the answer in zero steps. And if y is equal to 0 or y x mod y is equal to 0, x mod y means that x is a multiple of y. Now, what do we mean by y equals to 0? 
if the multiplication of these two numbers is zero, then we can also make this number zero by uh, multiplying it by zero, right? So in this case also, we will require only one step. So if these, this is the condition, we'll require one step. Otherwise, in the last case, we'll require two steps. So this is the solution for question number one for today's contest or problem A. So moving on to the next problem. So this is the problem in which we have been given an array and we have to find a subsegment. I'll explain you what the question says. So for example, if these are some values A, B, C, D, e, e, you have to like select a subsegment from it such that uh, the maximum minus minimum of this sub of this subsegment plus maximum minus minimum of the remaining elements of the remaining elements means the remaining elements in this case are a and e should be the maximum possible right and you have to select at least one such subsegment such that the length of the total sub subsegment is less than n uh, what does this mean if the subseg if the array is a b c d e you cannot select the whole array as a subsegment this is what the question says you have to select a subsegment which is of length less than the uh, length of the given array so you have to calculate the maximum minus minimum of this particular subsegment and the maximum minus minimum of the remaining elements right and you have to add both of them and we have to find the maximum answer that we can form using this particular method so if you observe then in the constraint the minimum value of n is 4 so let us work with this base case only and we will generalize the solution right so for example you have been given a b c d values four values we have been given a b c and d and for now assume that these are the these are in increasing order so a is the smallest and after that b then c then d right so like this the most optimal answer in this case when all the values are increasing is to take the biggest element and take the smallest element and write it as d minus a plus take the second most biggest element and the so like the second most smallest element then write it as c minus d and add both of them so uh, if if you can just observe simply this would be the most optimal answer in any Right. Take the biggest element and take the smallest element and they take the second biggest element and the second smallest element. Right. But there's one more thing we need to observe. For example, if there are four, so how can we obtain these two? We can just select these two numbers and form a subsegment. So in this case, we can do maximum minus minimum C minus B and from the remaining two values, we can do maximum minus minimum, which is D minus A. Right. So we can, uh, for this particular order, we can form the answer by selecting the middle subsignal. But if you observe, then no matter what the order of these four integers, the answer will always be the same. For example, let me write it as A, D, B and C. In this case, what happens is like I've changed the order and you can still select the same subsegment because now A and D are together and B and C are together. So you can select either of those subsegments and form the same answer in any order. Like even if I change the order to something like this, D, A, B, C, again, A and D are together. In any of the orders, either B or C would be together or A and D would be together, right? So you can select those subsegments and form the same answer every time. No matter how, uh, how many elements are there in between them, after them or before them, the answer will always be the same. And this is how we generalize the solution from n is equals to 4. This will work for every solution because even if we change the order, the answer will always remain the same because either we will be able to select B or C together or we will be able to select A and D together in some subsegment. Right. So the solution is also very simple. We, I can just take a vector of size n and I can take input in the vector then I can sort it and I can write the solution as b of n minus 1 that is the last element or the biggest element minus b of 0 plus b of n minus 2 minus b of 1 and this would be our final answer. So that's it for today's video. I hope you were able to understand the solutions. Uh, till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye bye.